Good morning and Namaskar. Welcome back to our YouTube channel, Vilasa for All, a hub for technical education and an epicenter for affordable Vilasa coaching in India. Today, we are indeed honored to have young and engineer, Mr. Agam Gupta, who has currently working as a component design engineer at the prestigious Intel company. Sir is a man of several honors from getting a vast experience of technical uh, field and having the best practical experience will surely help our, uh, our audience to learn from him. And I'm very sure that we are going to have a very good talk in this session. Sir, with your uh, kind permission, can we uh, start the interview? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so uh, the first question, sir, can you please explain uh, about your formal education how was your BTEC life in Italy and the key way to maintain a good GPA and how much did the NIT tag help you in the long run? Yeah, so if we start from the basics, so my hometown is Lucknow and I did my schooling from September Jaipuria school there. So from UKG till 12th, I did that. And then I, and uh, like after I completed my 10th, I started preparing for AIEEE and IITJ. So, <coughs> I cleared uh, AIEEE at that point of time, and then I was locked at uh, uh, NIT Patna. Okay, and the branch was Computer Science and Engineering. But somehow I chose Electronics and Communication. So if you ask me the reason, I am not aware as to why I chose it. But now I am like pretty much clear as to why I chose Electronics and Communication Engineering. So yeah, so like if we go into more relevant details, so I pass out. Uh, my BTEC in the year of 2016. And if you talk about my BTEC experience, it was quite good. And uh, if you are asking about how to maintain CGPA and also see like in the wrong, in the long run, if you are just uh, like focusing on all the key points during any examination, whether it be practical or MEXM or NXM, and you are just uh, like preparing for that with your heart, then efficiently, like at some point of time, you will be able to maintain that CGPA. It's not like that everyone has to get a nine nine pointer or ten pointer. It's not like that, and everyone has its own capability. Okay, so I'm not saying that uh, getting a high pointer is a very good thing, but not getting a high pointer is also not a bad thing. Okay, that is a subjective topic. So as far as CGPA is concerned, my CGPA was 8.7. So it was a roller coaster ride right? from the first semester itself. Like it was 8.4, then 9.7, then it uh, went on like uh, increasing up and down, up and down like a roller coaster. So finally, like the cumulative CGPA at the end of a semester, it was 8.7. Yeah. Yes, sir. Your work on many projects during and after your BTEC, like how did you uh, help to enhance your knowledge? Yeah, so uh, during BTEC, uh, in my college time, basically, I participated in several uh, robotics competitions, okay. And uh, I was like, uh, so in our college, there was also a NCC wing was there, NCC air wing. So although like I was not enrolled in the NCC air wing during my college, but I was enrolled during my school days. But I had a passion for uh, aero modeling, building static aircrafts and all those things. So I also like visited the... Uh, Sometimes this uh, NCC Air Wing uh, uh, in our college campus, and there also we designed some of the aero modeling like uh, aircrafts and all those things. And as per you ask regarding these electronic projects, so yeah, like uh, as I mentioned, like I was into uh, robotics and all. And during my final year project, basically I was working on a solid state uh, physics device modeling. So there basically I was working on graphene nano ribbon. So we wanted to basically use that graphene nano ribbon as a channel material for a field effect transistor. So like if you go into the details, so the thing is like uh, by further analyzing different uh, current versus voltage curves, whether it be the gate voltage or the drain, drain voltage or the source voltage, uh, we could make out that uh, if we increase the length or if we increase the width of that nano ribbon, how the uh, transistor characteristics are changing. So whatever uh, knowledge basically we acquire uh, theoretically while studying solid state electronics or electronic devices or circuit theory or digital electronics, analog electronics, anything. So I think that in that project, basically all that uh, 
knowledge was uh, utilized efficiently and uh, after the btech basically like uh, so i am a pass out of 2016 so after that basically i uh, i was placed in ibm and reliance geo because in our college nit patna like uh, none of the companies like electronic companies used to visit so the thing is like uh, i didn't want to go in ibm and reliance it's not that basically they are bad companies or i don't have interest simply it was not pertaining to all that uh, knowledge that i gained during my btech so i didn't want to go there so i joined a startup in gurgaon so that was avicon solutions private limited so the co-founder of that startup mr tapan kapoor he himself is an alumni of cadence design systems so he has a vast knowledge on how the complete system designing is done and there basically we were working on iot projects so like uh, complete home uh, home automation and basically we can say like uh, automatic weighing scale something like that so that organization was basically pertaining to all the iot stuff so there i stayed for about i think 1.6 or 1.7 years and then i joined logic fruit technologies gurgaon so there my role changed completely so there i was basically working as an article design engineer so working on the article designing for fpgas basically different protocols different projects so my expertise is basically into high speed serial protocols like pci gen 1 gen 3 gen 4 gen 5 usb 3.0 3.1 so i am uh, so i am expert in the five layer of that of those protocols and i stayed in that organization for about i think 2 years 9 months or 3 years and then i joined intel in 2020 under xeni group so xeni is basically xeon and networking engineering so basically they are, uh, these guys are working on uh, uh, highly complex uh, xeon servers soc so uh, there also i worked for about i think 1.5 or 1.6 years then i did an internal transfer and i came to psg group so psg is a group in intel wherein it was formed after intel acquired altera so they are basically into designing asics asics for fpgas so fpga is also an asic correct so currently like my role is basically on the service side so i am responsible for uh, like uh, designing testing and all those things uh, that are basically responsible for the service to work properly so service is basically a ip you can say a hard ip that basically the serial to parallel conversion and parallel to serial conversion so it's a mix of both analog and digital part so yeah like uh, as far as now like i'm working on the service and yeah this is all from my side yes sir this was very inspiring really sir uh, moving on sir have your volunteer experience helped you in your professional career since you did professional volunteering also can you please explain about that yeah so during the college days basically we had one uh, nss organization national service scheme so there basically i was not there for a long time in that organization so basically i went for about one year or so maybe less than a year so there uh, what we used to do was the children like who were from a like uh, their background was not such that they can fetch education from a very good school or something like that so the children from our nearby college area we used to enroll them in our uh, daily classes and basically we we used to teach them maths english science so the like uh, what do we say the classes can range from class 1 to class 12th also so the thing is like yeah like i stayed there and i felt like yeah like if we are uh, fortunate enough that our parents basically enrolled us in good institutions okay and by our hard work and all if we are able to succeed in our lives then why not those children who are coming from a lower background or like uh children whose uh, people basically are not able to support them financially so we thought of doing that and still like sometimes in bangalore also i stay in bangalore currently so sometimes i go to some uh, ngos and all i may be like i arrange a daily meal for them like there are 20 30 students are there okay i can fetch something for them from mcdonalds or pizza hut or something like that so yeah like see um, internally it will give you a lot of peace if you are financially stable and if you are willing to give it back to the society somehow so i think that uh, even if you are earning like a mediocre salary also then you can still help a poor guy so yeah that's from my side yes sir uh, 
uh, uh, while reading your profile, this one question like uh, uh, I wanted to ask you very precisely. Uh, what motivated you not to focus on the master's or the PhD program and put your emphasis on the skills you learn? Yeah, so it's quite a difficult question because the thing is, see, like I'm an only son of my parents, okay? So the thing is like, uh, if I go for masters outside, okay, then the thing is like what I have observed is like the person or the people who is doing master inside India or who is going outside or who is enrolling for a PhD course, once they taste the blood, okay, once they taste the blood, they'll prefer to stay outside. So the reason being I didn't go is like due to the family reasons. And the other thing is I thought that yeah, like better to gain some practical experience, maybe in future if I want to pursue. So there is a college called Bits Pilani. So during your uh, like professional career also, even if you're working in some organization, so you can uh, enroll in their uh, weekend classes basically. So they'll guide you as to how to do and how to accomplish your uh, MS, MTech, like any of the degrees. So like there is no such motivation as to why I didn't go or like, why I didn't do PSG and all, but it's like a personal thing only. Although I would recommend that people after gaining two or three years of experience, they should go for MS or uh, PSG thing. PSG, I'm not sure how much it will help, but yeah, MTech or MS will uh, definitely help. Because the thing is like, if you want to work on the CPU side or the server side, or if you want to work on the processor side, okay. So the thing is you need to have a in-depth detailed knowledge of how the processor works, how the instruction uh, fetching works, how the instructions are fetched from the memory, RAM, all these things need to be very precise and clear. So when you do MTech, you do, you do a research on a lot of research papers, you read them, you read them thoroughly. Uh, maybe you would like to implement that knowledge that is, uh, that is presented in the research paper in the form of some RTL code or something like that. So I would always encourage everyone to at least go for higher studies, even after they are uh, into the uh, like what do we say, professional work area after two or three years also. So it will be a boost in their uh, career. Yes, sir. Uh, moving on. Uh, you worked at Avicon Solution, then moved to Logic Pro Technologies. Uh, yeah. Uh, where you worked there for approximately two and a half years, and now you currently work at the uh, Intel company. How different yeah. is your job profile in terms of work experience? Because switching from analog to design to the, the currently component uh, engineer and it requires a various sets of uh, skills. How did you? Uh, yeah. Uh, so the thing is, like in. Uh... In Avicon, basically the thing was that we used to uh, design the analog hardware or the digital hardware ourselves. We used to make our own uh, like uh, PCBs. We actually call it printed circuit books, correct? We used to design our own hardware. We used to make the PCBs for testing purpose. And uh, then basically we used to uh, write a embed XE code for them also. So if you compare this work with what I used to do in Logic Fruit as an architect design engineer, that is completely different. There is no interconnection between that. So in a, so once you move from um, embedded work into the RTL work, things change drastically. Because in C or C++ or Java, any of the programming languages you take, everything there works in a sequential way. But when you are writing a RTL, that is basically working in a sequential and as a parallel way also. So like the way you want to design a hardware basically, in that way you have to think and you have to code the RTL. It's not like that, like if you want to write a simple counter, you will write a simple C code and it will work on the FPGA. It's not like that. So basically whatever you are writing in the RTL for FPGA or for any ASIC, you will have to basically think it logically with a piece of pen and paper and you will have to basically think that whatever I'm writing, what hardware does it correspond to? Like even if you're writing a simple flip-flop, okay. So you will have to think that, okay, I'm writing a flip-flop. So in the hardware, how will the schematic look? So that is completely different from embedded word or the C word. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, moving on here. You told that you currently work as a component design uh, engineer. Can you please kindly elaborate what exactly you do at this position? 
yeah so the thing is like uh, there is no such hard and fast rule about this designation only the thing is like when you are a component design engineer you will be uh, interested to take care and work upon a single ip so like uh, as i already told like we uh, we have an soc that soc can be an ac or an fpj okay so it has several parts are there input output peripherals are there memories are there processor is there okay some rams are there and some like uh, temperature sensors are there all those things are there okay so all these correspond to different ips basically so as a component design engineer you are basically entrusted to take the ownership of the single ip in my case it is the sardis ip and basically we have to make sure that when that ip is integrated at the soc level all the test cases are passing so the dv team will basically help us in uh, like uh, ensuring that all the test cases pass and basically once the tape in happens and once the uh, once the fpga comes in the lab then we have to make sure that the uh, perfect power uh, sequencing is happening and all those things yeah yes sir what is the most uh, pertinent question we ask for uh, uh, guest sir as an undergraduate engineer myself could you please guide me on what are the, uh, the programming languages or concepts we need to learn to get into a good product based company see now this is a very subjective topic the thing is these days what you you youngsters are more concerned about is money that i have seen okay so if you are more concerned about money and if you are thinking that no no our elect our branch is electronics but still we can study computer science and engineering and we can go for that branch i am okay with that i have no issues but if you are an are an electronics guy so being an electronics guy there are vast number of like opportunities for you in india like all the semiconductor organizations like intel qualcomm amd xilinx nvidia texas rambus lot of organizations are there okay so they are basically searching for the analog design engineers layout design engineers physical design engineers art design engineers verification engineers so if you go like if you classify all these particular designations so according to that during your btech time whatever area you are interested in you can basically focus on that like some people are interested on the analog side so then they can basically grasp more knowledge as to how the electronic circuits are working electronic circuits in terms of analog if someone is interested on the digital side then they can learn more as to how vsgl verilog or system verilog rtl coding is done okay they can go into the deep of the timing analysis because anyways when you are writing an rtl code you will have to ensure that your design is meeting timing otherwise your hardware won't work if you are a back end guy then again you need to have a mix of both these analog digital power timing all these things you need to know so i am not saying that during btech you need to grasp all the knowledge on these things but yeah if you are knowing the basics and if you are undergoing any technical training or if you are going like undergoing any internship in some of the mncs in india or like you yourself are working in drdo or isro or some other organizations and if you are able to like uh, so gain some practical experience during your internship then i think uh, from my experience what i have seen is that experience will really help you to land a perfect job and yeah see i'll not say that being an electronics engineer your pay will be like it will match to what the pay these cs guys are getting it's not possible okay but the thing is you will have that much amount of money that you will be able to sustain your family and your life in bangalore or in any of the metropolitan city it's not like that that everyone gets a package of 1 crore straight out straight when they pass from the college it's not like that i myself like if you hear my starting salary you will laugh okay but now if you hear my current salary then also you will laugh so the thing is growth should always be exponential okay so you guys have done engineering you guys have studied graph graphs and all in mathematics so the learning curve and this pay curve should not be a y is equal to x line it should be an it should be e, e to the power x exponential curve should be there like if you are learning so after some point of time your learning should be very high as compared to the experience or the number of years you are into the industry so your learning curve should not become stagnant once you are feeling that yeah i am not learning good things and all so either you switch to a different profile or a different organization 
wherein you think okay this role uh, like probably suits me so yeah like you guys can proceed like that but what my final words are don't compare your uh, package and all with the cs guys or any other different branch package will be different there will be a vast difference but at some point of time in your life when you are in 35 or 40s it like nothing will matter at at that point of time when you are young it will surely matter because everyone has dreams and like um, aspirations that they want to visit europe they want to visit us and all those things they want to roam around they want to go to thailand all those things that all can be done in your one one month salary okay so only my main point is don't focus on money at the starting gain your experience gain practical knowledge and then surely after 20 25 years you will basically succeed in your life that is the ultimate motto yes sir uh, can you please explain for a young undergraduate student like how would be the uh, job prospects salary or the learning a curve between the uh, front end or back end the design engineer in the ec domain yeah see again the front end and back end doesn't matter actually what matters are like how skilled you are and how up, up to date you are uh, with respect to the market so like uh, you guys have heard that currently like some of the companies are working on 3 nanometer and 4 nanometer or 5 nanometer okay so like suppose when the 3 nanometer technology comes okay so for the back end guys basically if someone is skilled enough to work on that 3 nanometer technology so obviously like he is well well uh, ahead as compared to his peers in the market so obviously his pay will be more okay so the main ultimate thing is there is nothing like back end will get more or front end will get more or verification guy will get more the simple funda is like you need to update your skills with the market that is the main point yes sir what would you recommend to an aspiring mtech or btech one uh, if you are watching this video yeah see like the aspirations can vary from person to person but again what i would like to suggest it is like basically if you are a btech guy or an mtech guy for btech people basically what the thing is even like suppose none of the electronics companies are visiting in your organization so then you don't have to lose hope you have to be patient you can go uh, join some organization in bangalore or in hyderabad or in noida they will uh, train you in some particular skills like either they'll teach you design verification or they'll teach you like teach you art designing for a6 fpgas or they'll teach you backing and all those things so the simple funda is that you that basically you have to be patient and you have to have confidence on yourself it's not like that suppose you are a btech or an mtech guy and your cs guys or mechanical guys are getting jobs in psus someone is getting placed in iocl and all and you guys are coming back to your hostel room you are thinking oh my god yaar this this friend is getting job we are electronics guys we are not getting job anywhere so that is not the case okay you simply have to have confidence in yourself that yeah if i work on my skills if i join some organization so even if you join some organization if you are spending some 1 lakh or 50000 or 70000 rupees in that organization and you if you are able to extract even 50% of that knowledge and with that knowledge if you are able to enter into any organization which is providing you one year internship then most probably i am 100% sure all those internships are definitely converted so it's not like that simply the main motto in your life should be that you should have faith and confidence in yourself in your parents and you should not be discouraged by seeing the, the success of other people like if someone else is successful you, you should not think like that oh yaar he is successful yaar i am not successful it's not like that success is a momentary thing i told you it's a it's a roller coaster ride okay so like someone may be at the maxima of his graph at some point in his life and someone will be at the minima there is a inflection point in everyone's life there is a point when you will basically roll down from your maxima to minima but it's not like that you can't again come back from minima to maxima again that inflection point will come so you just have to keep faith in yourself don't lose hope and all the best everyone yes um it was very great talking to you sir as an uh, engineer myself i feel that many jigsaw puzzles in my mind have been clarified hope to see you on yet another episode of our youtube channel uh, until then thank you sir
गुड बाय या थैंक यू